Hi, Connie from The Paint Photographer. I'm doing a spring YouTube collaboration with Jamie Ray Vintage and a few other YouTube friends. There's a link below to follow along in the playlist. Hope you enjoy this video. I took DIY vintage linen and covered this entire breadboard with one coat. Then I took a little vintage linen and put it on a palette along with some blue iris from DIY. I mixed them two together to make a lighter blue. I'm gonna use the IOD Rose Toil stamp set. This makes a really pretty China blue pattern. I put it on my cutting board, placing it on there where I think I might want it so I can visualize about where I'm going to want that blue paint to go. Then I take a spray bottle and spray my cutting board, making it a little bit more spreadable, if you will. And I go ahead and I put all of that light blue paint onto this breadboard in just some brush strokey patterns. Then I take my water bottle and spray over the top of it, getting it a little bit damp, and take a baby wipe and mute some of that paint off of there. I'm also feathering the edges so they're not quite so harsh, but you want a good contrast between your stamp and your paint. So you're just muting that down a little bit and smoothing out those edges. And here I go in with the IOD China Blue ink and put it on my stamp pad. I squirt it on there and then I rub it around and stamp the entire rose toil stamp with that china blue ink, making sure I get all of the areas because this is a very detailed pattern. Then I place it on the breadboard, giving it a good stamp, and voila, it's such a beautiful pattern. There's other pieces in that Rose Toil stamp set that go really well on there. Just place them wherever you think you might want some extra. You can leave it as is, or you can just keep stamping away. Next, I take a fine grit sandpaper and just go over the edges slightly just to bring out some of that wood grain on the cutting board, giving it that vintage look. Have you ever struggled getting your big top open? This one is almost gone and it still opens really easily. What I do is I take the cover off and I take my paintbrush that I'm going to use and I get all of that big top from inside that cover, scraping it back into the jar. I don't like to waste anything, so I get it all back in there. Then I take a baby wipe and I wipe out the inside of that lid, making sure that I get all of that wet big top off of there. And it gets inside those grooves so I take my fingernail and scrape it out of there, making sure that it's like glue. So you got to get that glue off of there. After I get the lid all finished, then I go ahead and I wipe off the rim of the jar, making sure to concentrate on the top because that is where it's going to stick to the cap. So if you do this every time you open it up, you'll be able to open your jar freely every time.
Now we're gonna take that big tap and go over the cutting board. You can use clear wax also if you want. This is a, not a food grade cutting board, so it's for decorative purposes only. Then I go after it's all dried and I put some twine onto the breadboard just to give it a little bit of interest. Just wrap it around the throat of it and tie that off. Here it is all finished. Do you have anything you can put the blue china pattern on? I'm sure you do. If you need any DIY paint or IOD products, head on over to thepaintedphotographer.com. This, and along with some other items, will be available on thepaintedphotographerhomedecor.com, and I'll ship right to your door. Thank you for watching, and make sure you follow along in the rest of the playlist. Until next time, happy painting.